Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good. All my fingers and toes are still in place, so we had a, a successful 4th of July. That's always good. Uh, we've got a special guest joining us on the radio program today. Uh, my guest for this Wednesday is Dirk Navell, and he's got a book called Road, Road Rage Justified. So Road Rage Justified, and it's actually a cool book. It's like an illustrated book, too. But it talks about a lot of pet peeves that people have on the road. I have some pet peeves on the road. Like people oh, I know you do. Driving the same speed as each other next to each other. We're going to see what all's in the book. We'll chat about that here later in the program. Got a quote for today. You ready for this, Heidi? Ready. From Robin Williams. No matter what people tell you, your words... I'm sorry. No matter what people tell you, words and ideas can change the world. Robin Williams. And I agree with that. Words and ideas can change the world going to change the subject and talk about special things going on today. That's on the way in a bit. John and Heidi. Many people make extra money working from home. They find a product and they market it to earn extra income. I know what you're thinking. I just don't have the time or personality to do sales. Well, you don't have to. We have a business builder program to make our program super easy. You can sign up for this work from home business and let us help you build it. We run ads on radio stations like this one and we help people like you learn how to earn extra monthly income. Call us toll-free at 1-800-975-7592. See how easy it can be to have your own business. 1-800-975-7592. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Wednesday, July the 5th. Today is Bikini Day. Ah. I guess, you know, if you're going to have a day for it, this is a good one. Today is also Work Without Your Hands Day. So I'm trying to run the microphone with my feet. Not working so hot. I'm not really. And you're not even paying attention. I'm listening. All of these special things going on. There's only two things on the list today, and that's that's it. Those I two. won't be celebrating Bikini Day. I can tell you that much um, for sure. How about Work Without Your Hands Day? You think you could do that one? No. Most everything we do is on the computer, Kinda, yeah. so that will be a little tough for us. I bet there's a way to do it. I just don't think I'm going to try it today. Coming up, we've got some more fun stuff to get to, and uh, we'll get to all of that on this Fifth day of July. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. John and Heidi. It's 2017. Are you still getting your movies and TV the way we did last century? Quit overpaying for old technology. For just $20 per month, you get live news, live sports, live channels filled with movies and more, all for just $20 per month. You can also stream movies and TV shows, so you can binge watch every episode of your favorite TV show. Learn more now at ChannelSurferTV.com. Get movies and TV for a low monthly fee at ChannelSurferTV.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. This is just bizarre, Heidi. Uh, At least we're not the only country where we have politicians that are nuts. Uh, The politicians in Sweden are going crazy, too. Some politicians in Sweden want to encourage men to sit down during urination. What? (laughs) The left party said sitting down during urination is more hygienic and reduces the risk of bathroom users having to negotiate their way around puddles en route to the toilet. What is going on there? Are they peeing all over the floor? If they are, then they got other problems. Supporters of the motion say sitting during urination also has medical benefits, including reducing the risk of prostate problems. Uh, hmm. I have never heard of that. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, what I do don't know where doing? they got that from. What are they doing where they're having puddles all over the place? Well, they're clearly not aiming. Apparently not. But here's the thing. Have you ever, well, you probably haven't because you don't go to the men's room. Uh, I've been to the men's room. It's disgusting in there. Last thing I want to do is sit on that toilet. I mean, I'll hold it, haven't I? I've held it. I'm like, no, no, I'll just hold it. You're like, well, we're not going to go home for like two more hours. I'm going, yeah, fine, I can just hold it. You know, if I just got to go in there and pee, that's one thing. But, you know, if you got to sit down, and they're saying they want you to sit down all the time now, even for urination. So, again, kind of a potty topic topic today. Not the, our typical type of thing to talk about, but this is happening in Sweden, and they're trying to encourage people to be more hygienic. How about you just encourage them to not make a mess? That would be good. It'd be a whole lot better. And then, you know, leave it up to them if they want to sit or stand. But I just don't get it. I don't think the government needs to follow me into the bathroom. <laughs> just saying. There you go. And uh, this is happening in Sweden. Not here. Yeah, Sweden. Uh, never would have thought that. But, you know, it's true because you heard it on the radio. Each day at this time, we talk about people doing dumb things under the influence, but addiction is no laughing matter. 
If you or someone you know needs help, there's a toll-free number you can call. 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline. 1-800-438-0380. And this is your brain on drugs. In a new trend, more women are now using marijuana during pregnancy. That's not good. No, you shouldn't that's a, be smoking anything during no, pregnancy. No, this is a bad plan, but there's apparently a, a new thing where that's becoming the it thing. So uh, be, we already have, you know, the next generation that we have right now is not exactly as smart as the generation before it. Imagine what this next generation is going to be like. <laughs> I'm just saying. And I got another one for you here. Contrary to conventional wisdom, drinking alcohol is not enough to make you fat or even gain weight as long as you drink in moderation. This is good news. Nutrition reviews report that a team of researchers examined 31 different studies on the topic. They concluded moderate drinking does not have a strong association with weight gain or high body mass index. Here's what it is, though. It's when you tie one on, you have a little too much to drink. What happens? You start munching You on get stuff. hungry. And yeah. you don't necessarily think about what you're eating because then later you, you go, definitely don't think did about I what eat all of that? Yeah. Why did I do that at four in the morning? So there you go. Kids, that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. Now your moment of duh. The best way to get away with a crime, just tell the cops not to bother getting up. A Vancouver thief specializing in hitting high-end jewelry stores by neutralizing their sophisticated security system, he's believed to be behind last month's multi-million dollar art heist at the University of British Columbia's Museum of of Anthropology. In this high-tech heist, he called the police and said, hey, I'm with an alarm company. We're going to be doing some tests, so you're going to hear some things. You you don't need to worry about it. We're just doing some tests. Campus security fell for it and ignored the ensuing alarms. We actually talked about this when it happened, too, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did. It was not part of Moment of Duh then. It was actually part of the scoop of the day, which we have coming up. But, uh, yeah, they (laughs) I'll tell you, that's gutsy. They just basically phoned ahead and said, hey, we're going to be there testing things. Yeah, this is going to be going off. Don't worry about it. Nobody thought to double check with the security company to find out if that was for real. So if ever somebody's telling you, hey, that thing you put in place to protect yourself, uh, don't worry about that tonight. Yeah, that's when you really need to be worried. (laughs) Double check and at least make make sure it's really them. I'm John Small. Ever since I was a little fat kid, my nickname has been Big John Small. Well, I decided it was time to do something about that. When I first stepped on the scale, a little over a month ago, it said overload. That was kind of scary. After about a week, it said 336. Then a week later, 326. Now, less than 316. I've lost over 20 pounds in about a month, and I did it with a delicious pink drink. It's been super easy, and if you'd like to try it for free, go to the website pinkdrinkfree.com. They'll mail you some free samples and the details on how to get more if you like it. That's pinkdrinkfree.com. Now your scoop of the day. A German man tried to leave his house to go to work only to find that somebody had taken bricks and cemented his front door shut. <laughs> yeah. He he was exiting the rear of his residence in Frankfurt, Germany, found that somebody built a wall in front of his entrance. He had to knock it down so he could leave his property. That is kind of bizarre. There's a prank that went awry. <laughs> I mean, do you think this was supposed to be there? You think someone was joking with him? Or what, what do you think I, that was I all think about? it was definitely somebody no, joking no. with him. A Russian man recently proposed to his girlfriend, a nurse, in a very bizarre way. Uh, if you're faint of heart and don't like disgusting things, just close your earlids for a second here. He hid the engagement ring in his stomach wound. She was changing oh, the bandages because he had like a wound. And she was changing the bandages. While she pulled the bandages off, she found the ring. Oh, that's just disgusting. She did say yes to the proposal, and she admits, I washed the ring before I put it on. Well, I hope you would. That is so disgusting. Yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> you can open your ear lids again. A Utah woman is accused of putting her two-year-old son... I'm sorry, putting two... Let me try this again. A Utah woman is accused of pulling two of her seven-year-old son's teeth out with pliers... In the Walmart bathroom. <laughs> so at least it wasn't over in the pliers aisle. <laughs> she bought the pliers, went into the bathroom, and pulled his teeth out with pliers in the Walmart. So? Wal- Apparently that you're not supposed to do that in the Walmart bathroom. I don't know. I- I've never used pliers to pull out teeth. Have you? My grandfather always pulled our teeth out when they were with loose pliers? with needle nose pliers. Yeah. See, now I've that never... That was what he always used. I've... It's perfect. It's They're tiny, and they've yeah. got a nice grip. And Ugh. If your tooth is loose... I mean, now if she was just pulling out perfectly good teeth, that's a different story. <laughs> I just think it's funny that Heidi said, so? <laughs> well, I'm just saying <laughs> that's how it was always done My at our family house. always involved pliers. Hey, a little bit of liquor. <laughs> 
How All is right. that any different than tying a string to a tooth and slamming a door shut? I don't know. I think the fact that they did it in a Walmart bathroom is kind of <laughs> bizarre. But there you go. I remember you trying to pull our daughter's tooth out oh. in the bathroom at a restaurant one time. I know. And she came and she out screaming, screaming, running through. We we walk out of the men's room because, you know, I was, she was only a little kid. So we go in the men's room because I wanted a paper towel. That's what it was. Uh, anyway, and we were trying to wash off the blood because <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> Anyway, she comes screaming out of the bathroom, holding her mouth, and I come walking out of the men's room realizing nobody else in this restaurant knows what just happened in there. And I'm thinking, I look like a real weird dude right now. We should not have done this. This was a bad, bad, bad idea. All right, moving along. Australia's University of New South Wales found that old people say embarrassing things in public because age makes our brain lose the ability to inhibit what we say. Uh, okay, let's go with that, New South Wales. I think it's just when you get to a certain age, you go, you don't I don't really anymore. care what you think of me anymore. That's exactly right. About 70% of cell phone owners have used their device in the last month to gather real-time information, things like traffic alerts or to look up sports scores. According to a sur- survey from Pew Internet and American Life Project, smartphones are turning us into real-time information seekers and problem solvers. That happens in our house all the time because we'll get into the dumbest arguments about the dumbest things. And my son and I both at the same time pull out our phone and Google something. We're like, who is the actor in such and such? You did this to me last night when we were watching the movie Big. And yeah, because I, I knew you were wrong. Well, but you Googled it to prove that I was wrong. Yeah. You're like, oh, you're yeah? Wrong. So you think so? What about this movie? And what about this movie? <laughs> I was like, he's been in lots of things. Yeah, There's I was, no way that's I accurate. was thinking of somebody else. So, <laughs> whoops. Hey, hey, I was wrong, Heidi. I am big enough to admit wow. it. Wow. I know. Researchers from the University of Leicester have found that a vampire would need as little as six and a half minutes to guzzle 15% of your blood. Would you guys please go to work on something important? <laughs> I mean, what... If if you had a child that was studying there and they were working on that and they came home, you know, at, at, at their summer break and they told you that's what they're working on, would you seriously consider moving them to a different school? Oh, absolutely. I would. That's I mean, what are you guys working on? Do something for real. We got a study not too long ago talking about if zombies took over, how long would it take? Guys, work on something important. Cure something. All right. This has been your Scoop of the Day. I know it's hot out now. It's the middle of summer. But imagine how cold it will be in November. That's when we're going to go to Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic. We'd love it if you'd join us. There's a week-long event called 80s in the Sand with a bunch of great music from bands like Loverboy, Starship, Night Ranger, and more. Plus, you get to meet 80s icons like Anthony Michael Hall, Andrew McCarthy, and so many more. If you'd like to join us for this great time, go to 80sinthesand.com. Use promo code RADIO to save $200 per person. That's 80sinthesand.com. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. we got a special guest joining us right now, Dirk Novell. He is the author of a book called Road Rage Justified. Dirk, how you doing, sir? Good. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, and I know a lot of folks, uh, this time of year, they are traveling even more than usual, doing family vacations and whatnot. So a lot of time spent on the road. I was flipping through your book, and there's several of these that I go, yep, that bothers me. Yep, that bothers me. Yep, that bothers me. So I think I could have, uh, this is almost like we, we coordinated this, because I agree with everything that you have in your book so far. Yeah, you know, they're pretty common, um, Yeah, but there's more than 50, but I figured 50 was a good number to cap it at. Well, and the one that, I don't know if this was the first one, but it was right, I believe, towards the front, is the people who hover in that left lane. That drives me crazy. Get over there, pass, and then get back in the right lane, right? Yeah, you know, that's the number one. I mean, every across the country, everybody can relate to that. My whole take is... You know, I don't mind if you're in it just as long as if someone, if you're going 72 and someone's going 74, you just get over, you know. It's not really your job to police the roads. Yeah. So I don't mind if you want to hang out in that lane as long as you're not, you know, slowing people down behind you. Well, and, and my my biggest pet peeve, even more so than going slow in that lane, is going the same speed as the guy next to you. I mean, if you two want to hover, get in front and behind each other rather than hanging out next to each other. That's a is that the same thing or is that a different one? That's actually funny. Uh, that's another rule, and I have that. That's uh, I call that the pacer, uh, uh, and I'm trying to figure out it's rule number six. It's uh, either speed up or move over when you're in the fast lane driving the same speed as the car to your right. You eliminate passing options for those behind you. And and one of the things that I read, and I'm thinking when this was, maybe a month ago, I was reading about in Germany how safe the roads are. They have the Autobahn, and it's you know people going really really fast, but it's so safe. 
But some of the things that they're very like these rules, they follow these. They they don't do this stuff there. You have to stay in the right lane because you can get in trouble. You can't get a ticket for speeding from what I read, but you can get a ticket for driving too slow in the wrong lane. I was like, that's awesome. Can we do that here? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, there's no speed limit in the fast lane. And I just heard this, that you actually, if you ever get rear-ended, it will always be your fault if you're in the fast lane. No kidding. If you got, yeah, you get hit. There's, you know, that's all on you. Yeah. Well, uh, again, visiting right now with Dirk Navelle. He is the author of Road Rage Justified. Now, how long has this book been out, sir? You know, only uh, it's three weeks, so pretty new book. But I'm hoping it will uh, make its way into families. And, you know, whether you have young drivers or your spouse maybe needs a little help on the road. Or, <laughs> you know, anyone can really benefit, I think. It's a funny book, but it's, you know, Road Rage isn't funny, obviously. But I think if people read this and they actually clue into it, I think our roads could become safer. I do too. And here's the thing that I really like. I like the tone of the book because it's not like talking down to me. It's talking directly to me, kind of a little bit of a you know a sense of humor in, in the book, and then some really nice illustrations too. Who did the illustrations? Did you do those as well? No, I, I had a, a, a guy that I knew here in Seattle that did them, and I would just kind of tell him what I was looking for and Usually two or three revisions later, we nailed it. I love them because it it does a really good job of kind of uh, hitting the point home as to what you're talking about. You know, some of it you can certainly just by reading what you're saying, you go, oh, I know what that is. But then, you know, to have those illustrations and go, oh, yeah, I've seen people do that. Uh, it, I think that really helps a lot, and it, it just makes this book kind of even even better than it would be without the illustrations. So, eight, you guys get you hit a home run with that. So, thank you, I appreciate. It. Yeah, they're kind of you know a little edgy. Uh, but, you know, I, I didn't pick on any specific group. It's not like a, you know, a racist book or anything like that. I mean, all groups are depicted, and uh, certainly, my, you know, the white male, too. I mean, 28 of the 51 illustrations. So I think it's just kind of a good sample of what we see on the road. Absolutely. Again, uh, Dirk Navelle, the book is called Road Rage Justified. Now, what was the what was the thing that made you decide, I'm going to write this book? What is your background, and what was it that made you decide this is... This is a book for me. You know, I just kind of always had an opinion on it. I'm a pretty chill guy, but I do get kind of, my peace gets disturbed every once in a while when I'm on the road. And I think, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, whether you're late or you're just having not a great day, it's just an easy place to kind of vent. But I've never, you know, raged hard, but I just thought, you know what? This ain't changing. People aren't, <laughs> stress ain't going away. Uh, traffic's getting worse. I've never seen kind of a book like this on like the social etiquette of driving. So I kind of got tired of talking about it, and I said, you know, I'm just going to get this thing done. I almost did it about 15 years ago, but, you know, life happens, and, you know, it gets in the way, and you find something else to focus on. But, yeah, I was was glad I finally did it. Well, it's a cool book. It's called Road Rage Justified, and it's illustrated, and it's got some uh, little examples. How many are there, 50 different examples in there? Yeah, there's 50. Um, You know, there's probably 100. But I just kind of went with the top fifty that I think most people can relate to. Now, as you're as you're getting people that are buying the book, are there specific ones that kind of ring as like the most annoying things for most people? You know, the fast lane. Uh, the, I've got a couple related to merging. That seems to be a hot topic. Uh, the zipper merge as seems to be a one people like to talk about. Um, you know, the intersection blocker, you know, when you're kind of in traffic oh, and yeah. you want to get through that light and you just got to watch, you know, is it moving? And the one that, you know, you park in the middle of the intersection and then you take everybody's alleys away. And yeah. uh, there's parking, you know, there's ones that are parked, you know, the guy who parks in the handicapped spot when there's 10 other spots that he can park in. Um, there's just, you know, the gas station guy that doesn't position his car to where you can actually fit the hose in yours. <laughs> there's just so many. And here's a funny thing. Again, I, 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 I'm laughing because I have complained about every single one of those things at least once. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, and the crazy thing, you know, I'm trying to reach that audience that maybe doesn't know. I think there's people like, I mean, I've had debates with people that are like, um, you know, I am, you know, I'm protecting the world, uh, not really, but, you know, by driving the speed limit in the fast lane. I don't think I'm going to reach or sway that group, but I hope to reach the group that might not be aware. Here's the, here's the thing that I would say to that group. It's not your job to do that. You're endangering other people. And I understand you have good intentions, but, you know, if somebody's going to go fast, they're going to find a way to go fast around you the wrong way. And then when there's an accident, whose fault is it really, you know, if you're the one that's causing the problem? So 
I understand they're saying, hey, I'm trying to just make things safer by slowing those people down. Well, it's not your job to slow them down. There are police out there. They have these lights on the roof of their car. They'll pull them over and do their job. You know, that's not up to you to do that. So Funny how some people like to play traffic cops. Exactly. Again, uh, Dirk Novell, thank you so much, sir, for taking the time to chat. And thanks for writing the book, Road Rage Justified. I think that there was definitely a need for this. Hey, thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. And one of the things that I, I said, I was joking when I said this, but the, the more I think about it, the more I think that this would be a good idea. Because you learn a lot about somebody by writing with them. I said, I think everybody should take their job interviews in a in a car behind the steering wheel. The guy interviewing you should be sitting in the passenger seat, and you should have to drive through rush hour traffic <laughs> to see what you're really like under pressure. I've I've ridden with people who are like idea. quiet as a church mouse, and then you get them in traffic, and they're yelling at people and honking their horn. You're like, who is this person? <laughs> so... You know, my brother once got into it with a guy, and uh, believe me, I don't come from a family of road ragers, but <laughs> he got into it with this guy. They end up coming into the same parking lot. He was the guy who interviewed my brother for a job. Really? My brother's like 6'5", you know, so he got out of the car. My, this guy recognized my bro, but that's not a great way to start a relationship, <laughs> is it? Not a good way. Did he get the job? <laughs> No, I don't think you did. But, you know, okay. that's the clarity that kicks in. We're like, when you rage or you get upset and then you actually know the person and then they see you. Yeah. And then you're like, ah, oh, man, I feel really bad. Well, and I read, this was this was on Facebook, and I know it's not a true story, but it's a funny story. There was a lady that was, you know, in traffic and honking and trying to get people to move, and a policeman came up and, and arrested her. And uh, when when she was arrested, she was saying, "I don't understand why I'm why you're arresting me." And he said, "Well, on the back of your car, there's this, there's a sticker that said Jesus loves you, and there's another one, this a uh, fish symbol here, and all of these religious stickers. We just thought that maybe somebody had stolen the car, you know." So <laughs> I was like, "Because I love it, you know." She wasn't acting the way that her car says she should have been acting. So I think everybody can relate. Absolutely. Again, the book is called Road Rage Justified. It's available right now. We're going to throw a link in our social media to make it really easy to find as well. That's at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Are you enjoying your summer or are you worrying about this fall and how you're going to pay for college? A few years ago, a young man named Matthew was having those same worries. Then he went to work to find as many grants and scholarships as he could find. And he got a $70,000 top rate education for free. Now he's showing you how to do it too. FreeEducationUniversity.com can help you find ways to get your schooling paid for. And right now you can get this information for less than half the regular price. Use promo code RADIO1000 to save $1,000 at FreeEducationUniversity.com. John and Heidi. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Researchers say it appears the more carrots and tomatoes you eat, the less your chance of having asthma. How crazy really? is that? Yeah. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Peanut oil is used for cooking in submarines because it doesn't smoke unless it's heated above 450 degrees. I would still be in trouble then. I'd crank that sucker <laughs> yeah. up to high. What are you making over there? Like making an egg? <laughs> Why is there so much smoke? I don't know. I put it on high, cooking at 2,000 degrees. My egg's done in like half a second. I don't even have to crack it open. It's already cooked. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? In the adult human body, there are 46 miles of nerves. It's hmm. a lot of nerves. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? There are no permanent rivers or lakes in the entire country of Saudi Arabia. So they dry up. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that jump? An atomic clock can be made so accurate, it'll be accurate to one second in every 150,000 years. There you go. So if you want to be, you know, that accurate, that's how you get that accurate. A couple of fun facts brought to you by PinkDrinkFree.com. Not just another diet, it's a way of life. PinkDrinkFree.com. John and Heidi. I'm John Small. Ever since I was a little fat kid, my nickname has been Big John Small. Well, I decided it was time to do something about that. When I first stepped on the scale, a little over a month ago, it said overload. That was kind of scary. After about a week, it said 336. Then a week later, 326. Now, less than 316. I've lost over 20 pounds in about a month, and I did it with a delicious pink drink. It's been super easy, and if you'd like to try it for free, go to the website, pinkdrinkfree.com. They'll mail you some free samples and the details on how to get more if you like it. That's pinkdrinkfree.com. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. One of the greatest free products available anywhere is all natural, organic, no moving parts, no batteries, non taxable, and fully returnable. It is a healthy hug. Yeah. I think we've talked about this before. I think it was this exact same story. I believe I found it one other time. 
Helps the body's immune system. Hugs also keep you healthier. Hugs cure depression. Hugs reduce stress, induce sleep. They're invigorating and rejuvenating. Wait a minute here. How can a hug induce sleep and be invigorating and rejuvenating at the same time, Heidi? Doesn't make any sense to me. Does that make sense to you? Well, yeah. It's depending on when what you're kind being of hug? hugged. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. It's like a if Swiss it's a, Army If knife. it's a comforting hug because oh. you're upset, it could be. It would be very calming and well. Hugs yes, have no absolutely. unpleasant side effects. Well, I don't know if I agree with that either. That is absolutely I, true. I go to your family events and everybody wants to hug. I'm like, oh, I gotta. Oh, We're I'm not very gonna, huggy. I gotta we hug love someone to else. hug. I gotta hug. Hugging I know. is the best. Uh huh. Hugging is nothing less than a miracle drug. Hugging is all natural. Hugging is organic, sweet, uh, naturally sweet. No pesticides, no preservatives, no artificial ingredients. 100% wholesome. Hugging is practically perfect. There are no movable parts, no batteries to wear out, no periodic checkups, low energy consumption, high energy yield, inflammation proof, non-fattening, no monthly payments, no insurance required, theft proof, non-taxable, non-polluting, and of course, fully returnable. So all of those good things that go along with a big old happy hug. I hug everybody. I know you do. And there, then here's there, the thing. There are, there are a few times where I've gotten the whole, I, I'm not a hugger, and no, they I, refuse to hug. And do you then get I'm this where like, they just put their hand out no to shake? No wonder you are such a delight to be around. <laughs> they, they put their hand out to shake, and you just Usually smack it aside and give them a hug anyway. Usually people who don't want to hug are very, very bitter, angry, horrible yeah. people. Yes, we are, because we don't want hugs. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be so much happier if you just accepted hugs. Yeah, there you go. Well, I don't. So thanks anyway. I think it's because you didn't get enough hugs as a kid. I didn't. And, and I don't need any That's why you're more. so crabby so today. You're trying to make up for it now? You it's need not going to happen. No, there's no way it's going to happen. <laughs> anyway, she likes to hug. And she likes to hug. I would prefer a hug over a kiss any day. <laughs> okay, I'll come over there and give you a hug. But it's going to lead to a kiss, just so you know. <laughs> She's my wife, and that's the way it works. Coming up, we're going to talk about dogs. That's on the way. It's 2017. Are you still getting your movies and TV the way we did last century? Quit overpaying for old technology. For just $20 per month, you get live news, live sports, live channels filled with movies and more, all for just $20 per month. You can also stream movies and TV shows, so you can binge watch every episode of your favorite TV show. Learn more now at ChannelSurferTV.com. Get movies and TV for a low monthly fee at ChannelSurferTV.com. If your dog is left pawed, they're more likely to attack. <laughs> Did you know there was a thing like that? I didn't know. How do you tell if, they, if they're writing with their left paw? Left-handed dogs are more likely <laughs> to be aggressive to strangers than those who are right pawed. Australian researchers tested a group of puppies to see which paw they prefer to use for basic things. Then they analyzed their behavioral traits. They found while there is no link of levels of excitability or attention-seeking, the animals which were left pawed were much more likely to act aggressively towards people that they did not know. I They're just would... grumpy because everything is made for the right pod dog. Oh, I'm world. sure they are. Yeah. Squeaky toys. I don't know. Scissors. Yeah, you know. <laughs> everything. Bowling balls, shotguns. <laughs> I mean, it's just tough to be a left pod dog. <laughs> I didn't even know there was such a thing. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and once again, going back to what I said earlier in the program, whoever's working on these studies, do something important, please. <laughs> Australian researchers. Well, that explains it. They're just sitting down there having fun. Hey, I got an oh. idea. Let's get a grant to study the excitability of left-handed dogs. <laughs> All right. Coming up, we got some bad news. We're going to share that with you here in a bit. At the end of each program, we like to share some good news, but right now i got some bad news. Uh, bad news for people who love reality shows. They're going to become even more boring real soon. Agents and casting directors say that they are seeing a shrinking pool of people who would actually want to appear on a reality show. Actors who used to do things like this for exposure now see it as a stigma. Non-professionals are weary because too many shows humiliate the contestants. Yep. A TV Guide Online editor says they doubt there will be a shortage of contestants, but it's going to be a shortage of people we actually want to see. There's going to be a reduction in the quality of people that yep. appear on reality shows. Now, true story, we actually had somebody reach out to us about doing a reality show, and I remember the whole process, and I was telling, because it wasn't just us, it was several other people that were with us at the station, too. And I remember ahead of time saying, be yourself on the video, because they were doing like this video stream. I said, be yourself, because if they're if that's not what they're looking for, we're the wrong people anyway. Right. And But, you know, we don't want it to be this, you know, 
we don't want to have to pretend to be somebody we're not. But that was my biggest concern with the whole thing, too, was how are they going to make you out yeah. to look when they edit those videos? Because yeah. they change things around. They do. They edit things to make well, it look a certain way. As it as it turns out, they haven't gotten back to us. So maybe we were too much <laughs> ourselves. I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, maybe we don't want to watch these people. And that's probably okay. John and Heidi. I know it's hot out now. It's the middle of summer. But imagine how cold it will be in November. That's when we are going to go to Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic. We'd love it if you'd join us. There's a week-long event called 80s in the Sand with a bunch of great music from bands like Loverboy, Starship, Night Ranger, and more. Plus, you get to meet 80s icons like Anthony Michael Hall, Andrew McCarthy, and so many more. If you'd like to join us for this great time, go to 80sinthesand.com. Use promo code RADIO to save $200 per person. That's 80sinthesand.com. Hey, don't forget to get married because it can help you from being forgetful, um, I think. It says matrimony is so good for people that even afterwards, uh, memory loss and what? Oh, it even wards off, not afterwards. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Probably doesn't help reading. Uh, it even wards off memory loss and dementia. It says startling new facts were revealed in a study of 1,400 participants. Researchers began with a group of at age 50 or so, then checked back 20 years later. The results of the survey showed that those who were widowed or divorced at midlife were more likely to fall victim to Alzheimer's themselves. Apparently, married couples provide each other with enough mental and social challenges to hold dementia at bay for at least several extra years. Scientists did include other factors that could lead to Alzheimer's, uh, a devastating illness caused by complex combinations of genetics and environment. But most important conclusions from the study are this. Maintaining an active lifestyle of healthy eating, regular exercise and mental challenges, and a marital status lowers your risk of developing this deadly disease. So I think we're doing pretty good because, let's see, an active lifestyle, we got that. We do not. (laughs) Healthy eating, boy, that's us. Regular exercise. No. Mental challenges. Well, we do have mental challenges. We do have mental challenges. (laughs) We're both mentally. (laughs) No, that's not what I mean. That sounded wrong. But we, we challenge ourselves mentally quite often. And a marital status. So we got the mental challenge stuff going on, and we got the marital status going on. But everything else, we're in trouble. Yeah. We might end up with dementia. So we better be careful. So we you need know what? to. I don't know that I would mind that. There's a lot of things I'd like to forget. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I there are things that I'd probably want to forget as well. But I, oh, man, my my grandmother had uh, dementia. She had Alzheimer's, and I have another grandmother now that's suffering with the same thing. And this grandma, so far, it's not so bad. But she forgets little things. But we don't see it as much. I remember when my uh, we had a, a little kiddo born in the family. We were in the hospital, and she kept asking why we were in the hospital. You know, so. It's uh, I don't know, just kind of a that's that's a tough thing when you when you have a loved one that goes down that road. It's it's tough. So uh, coming up here in a bit, guess what? We do have some good news to get to. That is on the way. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. I always like to wrap things up around here with some good news. And Heidi, I think I've got some good news here. Okay. It says, how your leftovers could feed the homeless. That sounds like a good idea, doesn't yeah. it? It says, what if you could actually make the world a better place by giving away your leftovers? Well, this group went to Skid Row to help feed the homeless with food in tow in a new Ionic hybrid. I think that's a car. Anyway, they uh, they decided to go down and, and see what they could do by f- helping folks uh, get some leftovers, and they gave them away. I've got a video. This is from BuzzFeed, and I've got the video on our Facebook, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. I think it's really neat uh, to be able to help people that, you know, and it would be a good idea. Here's the thing that really stinks. There are a lot of restaurants that cannot take their leftovers and give them to people in need. Because of health code regulations. Yeah, but you know what? What would stop anybody? You can't give it to like a food pantry. Yeah. But what would stop them from taking those leftovers down to Skid Row and just saying, yeah. would you like some food? And and here's, there because was a restaurant. that's completely different. There was a restaurant not too long ago that we, we watched. And it's a place that you cannot get 
a reservation like for two weeks because they're so packed. But it's it's a high end, really expensive restaurant where it's hard to get a reservation. And then there's like one day a week where, or maybe it was just a certain time of the day, where homeless people can come in and eat for free. Do you remember that's that? Awesome. Yeah, that was a neat story. And and that's what they were doing is they're going, okay, this is a bunch of stuff that we can't do anything else with, but here's a way for us to give back yeah. and to help people. So you know, the homeless guy on the corner is getting to go to a really classy, fancy, neat place that other people are clamoring to get a reservation right. at. I thought, how cool is that? And I don't remember where that was. But this is a neat story we have today. It's a different story, but you can check that out on our Facebook page if you'd like. If you like those heartwarming stories. I like those. You do. I like them a lot. You know what they usually do, though? They make you cry. Yeah. And I'll admit that because I'm man enough to admit that I cry. My wife over here doesn't... And I, I laugh at you. <clears throat> yeah. She doesn't cry. She has no heart. So... <laughs> <laughs> She 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 has one. It's just somewhere way way deep down under. I used a bunch to have a heart. These last two and, and a half years have turned my heart to stone. All right. If you'd like to see that, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Time now for a bonus break on the John and Heidi Show podcast. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. we got a special guest joining us today. This is going to really appeal to business owners, especially if you're a business owner that has a website. And if you're a business owner that doesn't have a website, you should really listen because I don't think that internet thing is going to go away. going to talk about your website being mobile. And a small business expert that we're chatting with right now is Greg Goldfarb, VP of Commerce at GoDaddy. And we've got Greg on the line. Greg, how are you doing, sir? Great. Excited to chat with you here. Now, you guys uh, say it's kind of important to make sure your website is mobile, isn't it? Yeah, and in fact, um, when we talk about websites going mobile, it's really two things. One is um, make it look great on mobile because that's where most most consumers and people in general are visiting sites. But the other side of going mobile is, for the first time, making it easy for people to actually create and launch a website from your mobile. So with our new uh, product called Go Central, um, really for the first time, anyone can create a site right from their from their uh, smartphone and publish it right you know, from their device. Oh, that's really cool. I didn't know you could do it that way. Now, how important is it for a small business to have a website and, and social media? How has that impacted the way people do things online? Yeah, I think having a website is really table stakes for for a small business these days, um, and really it's driven by how consumers and customers are are looking for things and consumer expectation that um, they can they can find you online. Um, social media is a great complement to a website, and um, we've we built this new product with that in mind. So as you create your site um, on Go Central, you can you can also create, let's say, a Facebook page if you don't have one, and 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 use the same images and content across both. So you have one consistent presence online, and that that's really important um, because consumers, if they feel like things are disjointed, they they tend to tend to go somewhere else. That's a cool idea. With um, our new product, Go Central, you can you can create a mobile, but it also work, uh, works great from from other types of computers as well. So this uh, on the go website building utilizing a, a smartphone, do you think that will kind of take over the old fashioned way of working on a regular computer? Um, you know, I, I don't about taking over. Um, will take some time. We but we certainly see it as a as a big trend, and we're already seeing over twenty percent of users who are. We're creating, updating, publishing their sites for mobile. We we just launched this earlier this year, um, and we see the the uh, laptops and tablets as as important going forward as well. Um, at some point, we could see um, more activity on on mobile than bigger screens, but um, we don't necessarily think it's about taking over. It's more about what's most convenient for for customers and users. And it seems like we've got these darn computers, uh, the, the ones that we put in our pocket that are on our phones, the tablets and the and the smartphones. We got those with us all the time. So, you know, that's, I think, why so many people are utilizing those to get online. It's just a convenience factor more than anything. Yeah, well, I think it's a convenience, and it's really, if you think about it, it's um, people more and more are used to be able to do things and get things when, uh, when, they, when the idea comes to mind when the light bulb goes off and and um, you know I think that's a, a major factor is 
how do you make bring immediacy to to small business owners and to enable them to uh, do what they need to do when they need to do it. We we all know everyone's stretched for time or pressed for time. Um, we all know that customers and consumers um, have um, higher and higher bar in terms of their expectations of responsiveness. Um, and so enabling um, small business owners to, to really create their presence and manage their business from mobile is, is um, it's just, it's the new way. Period. Absolutely. It's what people expect. Again, visiting with Greg Goldfarb. He is the VP of Commerce at GoDaddy. And one of the things that I think is kind of interesting in your survey that you guys have done, you kind of have the hot spots. Where would you say are those hot spots where people are are publishing mobile websites uh, as far as geographically? What are those big locations? Yeah, so uh, it's it's really widespread ac- across the country. Some of the ones that... that, um, that um, we see in this early data are St. Louis, Detroit, Dallas, uh, Pompano Beach in Florida, Washington, D.C., Santa Ana, Atlanta, Boston. So as you can see, it's really a, across the country. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, and, and overall we're seeing, like I said, over 20% of our users who are, who are relying on mobile to, to manage their sites. And in these areas, it's even higher. Um, so it's, it's just an indication, I think, of, of the fact that small business owners really view mobile as, as the personal computer in many it, respects. Is there a certain cross-section of business that has really adapted this earlier? Like, which different industries are you seeing that are really taking off with this mobile-friendly website? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty widespread, but, but, you know, if some of the hot spots, I would say, include things like um, real estate agents um, and other home services like electricians and and designers. Um, uh, we're seeing a lot of activity in um, in fashion and design as well. Um, events and and uh, nonprofits is another segment. So if you think about it, those are those are um, types of businesses or types of users that almost by by the definition of their job, they're constantly out and about on the go. But yeah. um, we're really, we are seeing it um, in a in a broad broad based way across other areas as well. So for people listening, if there was somebody that says, "Man, I'd like to know more about this whole Go Central thing," where do they find that? Uh, just go to GoDaddy.com and um, you'll see it there. Um, we we offer a thirty day free trial that. Um, Available to everyone. You don't even need a credit card to get started. We've made it really, really easy, um, and we're seeing we're we're seeing people um, build and publish sites in in well under an hour. So a lot of the, a lot of what we've done um, in in thinking about this new product is about is how do you really make it easy for people to build sites from any device they want to and make them look great on both mobile and and computers. So go to and you can find out more information. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time today, Greg, and it, it's fascinating time to be alive. All of the technology that we keep coming up with here to make our lives easier, and and you know, think about this. You know, just twenty years ago, even to build a website was almost impossible, and now you can build a website on your phone. I mean, think of how far we've come in twenty years. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty neat. Yeah, back then you had to hire somebody to do that kind of thing. There was it was really hard to do it on your own, but. Uh, thanks thanks for what you guys are doing to help small business owners kind of take control of that on their own and and uh, get things done yeah no we're we're excited and and um, we really are all about enabling people to be successful with their new ideas and and we see this as a big part of it I agree again Greg Goldfarb VP of Commerce at GoDaddy and we appreciate you tuning in to the John and Heidi show